Hi, I'm Ashwini, and I'm going to go over our recent work on model poisoning attacks against federated learning systems at scale. Here's an overview. The objective of a model poisoning attack is to induce targeted misclassification of data points in the training set or validation set. The attacker controls one or more malicious clients in the federated learning setup. The attacker does not modify the data they want to misclassify in any way. The malicious clients train the global model on their data with flipped labels and send the update to the parameter server. These malicious updates can be boosted to overcome the effect of averaging by benign clients. The local loss can also be modified to shape malicious updates to resemble benign ones, but we ignore these modifications since we assume that secure aggregation will be used in practice, making such comparisons invalid. Through these three overarching questions, we present the case for the unrecognized effectiveness of model poisoning attacks, explaining why and how previous work has severely undersold how easy it is for a small number of adversaries to insert many backdoors into an image classification model. We evaluate a number of new as well as previously proposed defenses against these attacks and conclude that L2 norm clipping is the most effective. In this context, we develop an adaptive attack which overcomes the norm clipping defense and evaluate its effect on the utility robustness trade-off achievable for federated learning systems. To understand why model poisoning attacks are more effective than we thought and to compare attacks across different settings and system scales, we introduce a new metric. We call this metric the outsized impact factor, or OIF. The formula is presented here as the ratio of the number of successfully inserted backdoors to the number of data points controlled by the adversaries. The latter quantity is the number of adversaries multiplied by the number of data points divided by the number of clients. Intuitively, we believe that even a naive attacker should be able to obtain an OIF of one. In other words, misclassify as many points as it controls. We compare the OIFs of previous works, can you really backdoor federated learning? and analyzing federated learning through an adversarial lens and observe that they both have OIFs much smaller than one. We evaluate the attack at scale and observe large OIFs. In both plots, we train a resonant model on the CIFAR-10 dataset with 24 epochs, which without any attacks or defenses achieves 90% accuracy. We use 10,000 clients with 100 workers or clients participating per round. In the left plot, we use 10 adversaries total, which means one adversary participates every 10 rounds on average. In the right plot, we use 100 adversaries total, which means one adversary participates in every round. We see that the backdoor attack can achieve high OIF, albeit at the cost of validation accuracy. We believe stealth should be a priority for the attacker, since the central coordinator for federated learning can simply toss any model with low accuracy. It is relatively easier to get a high OIF when fewer adversaries exist. So for the rest of the experiments in this talk, we use 100 adversaries. We now consider which defenses would work against model poisoning attacks. Prior work has asserted that differential privacy can be used as a method for adversary robustness by training the model with DPSGD. We evaluate this claim and observe that the noise com addition component of DPSGD has little to no impact on the number of inserted backdoors, serving only to reduce the validation accuracy of the final model. Norm clipping prevents boosting, which is how the backdoors are inserted. To establish this fact further, we worked out bounds on the minimum L2 norm of the malicious update in the case of a binary linear classifier. The bound given here can be numerically computed for any time step. In particular, for the first step of training, we get an expression that is mainly dependent on the angle between the means of the two classes and the point to be misclassified. Thus, there is a fundamental lower bound on the norm of the malicious update in order for it to be successful. This justifies the use of the L2 norm clipping defense, and we are currently working on extending these bounds to more complex settings. Now, we present some ideas for defenses we tried but did not work. Our attack evaluation shows that the model poisoning attack mostly functions as a model replacement attack, which is to say that it starts making an impact once the model has almost converged. Therefore, we should be able to freeze certain layers of the model that don't need to be updated once the model is close to converging. However, in practice, this is ineffective because the backdoor attack mostly updates the classifier. Freezing the classifier is infeasible since this pretty much stops training. On that note, we also considered early stopping. However, it's not clear that early stopping is applicable in every setting. Where continuous training is necessary, early stopping can't be used. This plot 
shows the differential privacy and L2 norm clipping defense evaluated against a range of boosting factors. Both defenses significantly mitigate the attack, but the L2 norm clipping defense is more effective at reducing the outsized impact factor without degrading validation accuracy. With the context that norm clipping is the defense we need to beat, we set about creating novel attacks to outsmart the defense. We try compressing the malicious update by only sending the high magnitude entries. However, this ends up degrading accuracy without much benefit. We try distributing the backdoors among the malicious clients. Instead of attempting to backdoor the entire malicious data set each time a malicious client is chosen, this serves to decrease the norm of the update since the norm of the update scales with the number of data points the update has taken over. We also try using projected gradient descent to directly reduce the norm of the update. This plot shows the Pareto frontier of the distributed backdoor attack evaluated against the L2 norm clipping defense with the same parameters we used earlier. We vary the size of the backdoor and the number of points we are trying to misclassify and see a curve emerge where we do better than we were previously without the distributed backdoor attack. This plot shows the Pareto frontier of the projected gradient descent attack evaluated against the L2 norm clipping defense with the same parameters we used earlier. We vary the number of epochs to get the Pareto frontier. While not as effective as distributing the backdoors among different clients, it still improves the outsized impact factor compared to the standard model poisoning attack. This plot shows the Pareto frontier of a combination of the distributed backdoor and the projected gradient descent attack evaluated against the L2 norm clipping defense with the same parameters we used earlier. We vary both the size of the backdoor, the number of points that we are trying to misclassify, and the number of epochs. Combining both these variations together results in a more effective attack, which can actually recover the outsized impact or factor of one, which we view as a baseline. We are continuing to explore model poisoning attacks on a number of fronts. We are looking at improving existing attacks using a better distribution of points, as well as better optimization techniques to improve the attack success of the malicious update. We are also looking at other domains and the generalization performance of model poisoning at scale. We have started extending our theoretical results to more complex models and determining the values of these bounds in settings of interest. These explorations will divide the development of better defenses. Thank you.